Um, we got any able-bodied hands that would like to like to chip in for about 10, 15 minutes right after Cowboy Church today? We want to we want to move the the round pin out of get it back up against the fence so that uh, we can come in there tomorrow and wrangle goat heads. So we just need some hands to help move some of those panels back against the fence so Dewey can get in there and serve some dust. Dewey's got a little, little rope that he runs around. All right. Yeah. right. Right after Cowboy Church, head over, head over towards the arena. We got, what else we got? Oh, oh, we have some announcements this morning. Most of them's in the bulletin. How about a big hand for the chuck wagon team and the breakfast this morning? All right. All right. What do we got? Next week, dinner on the ground. Next week, next week, dinner on the ground. Salad lunch. There's probably stuff written about it somewhere. Look it up. Thank you, everybody. Tuesday's work day. Tuesday morning is work day up here. Bob runs crew up here, and there's been a bunch of good showing up up here doing stuff. And yay, crew. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday, 9 o'clock, we show up and get stuff done and thank everybody that's been coming and getting her done. We don't pass the hat at Cowboy Church for, for visitors, newcomers. We've got a couple birdhouses back there. And you just put in there just what God tells you to, and it'll be all right. Keeps the lights on. Got a sign-up sheet for membership class, and I plan on having membership class next Sunday right after dinner on the ground. So anybody that's interested in becoming a member of Cowboy Church, get your name on the list or something, be sure and come over there to trailer. Come over to trailer um, for membership class. It doesn't take long, 10, 15 minutes. We just uh, get a piece of paper tells you what we believe and why we believe it. And if you agree with it, you get a number. What else we got? Baptisms. We're gonna be baptizing too here real, real soon. Anybody that's wanting to get baptized in our River Jordan horse tank over here, get your name on the list back there. Get a hold of me after Cowboy Church. What else? White House. That is a. Is is there anybody here that's not been to the White House? Our White House. Our White House. It has the handiest furniture in it. It's right outside this door to the left. You go out there. It's a two holer. And it's much more efficient than the one in Washington, D.C. because ours actually flushes. So it's handy. It's got handy furniture in it. We got cold water over cold, there. Got cold, cold water back here by electric box. Yeah, cold drinks back there. Trail ride coming up Saturday the 20th. It's like two weeks from, from several weeks ago. It's a week from yesterday. Yeah. You know, anything past today is yesterday to me, so whereas 20 years ago is yesterday. What else we got? You know, that's our anniversary. It's the 20th of August, and my wife is telling me I messed up on the calendar. At least you didn't call her a different name. Who? <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like this. You know, it's like a guy that was laying in bed talking, and wife said, if, if I die, would you get remarried? He said, well, it's been a good marriage. I guess I would. You know, and she said, well, would you just keep our house and live in our house? If, if, if I died, you remarried? Yeah, I guess we would. Would you keep my furniture? Well, yeah, I guess we would. And, and, and well, would you keep our same bedroom? For, well, I don't know. Probably, yeah. She said, well, would you keep my golf clubs? He says, well, no. She's like, he says, well, why not? She says, why not my golf club? And he said, because she's left-handed. <laughs> Roger, my wife and I beat your anniversary date by 10 days. Our, we just celebrated our 36th. 36. 36. On, on the 10th of this month. <laughs> So you were married before I was born, huh? <laughs> I was checking. Um, yeah, ours is 57 years. 57 years, and it's, it's went by like, it just goes. What else we got? Any other announcements? 
We've got, I've got about, I, oh, we don't, I did that, but bird has a huge, yeah, put your cell phones on that mute thing, or, or push the airplane or whatever, because if it goes off during church, we will promptly embarrass you. If you need a seat, have trouble finding a seat, let us know, we've got armed ushers, so it's, we'll get you in here, and now, since it's 10.59 and a half, I can pray, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the blessings today. Thank you for each one that's here, Father. We thank you for healing. And we just pray that you heal others, Father, that are struggling with disease and sickness. Father, give us strength. Lord, we have some that are struggling with addictions and bondage to the flesh, Father. We just pray to set them free. Lord, help, help this church to be a beacon of light to this community around us, Father. Comfort those in mourning today. And Father, we just thank you for the food you provided for us, the hands that, pre that prepared it, Father, for all the work they do and for each and every living stone in this body of Christ that you put together here, Father, makes this cowboy church work. And I just thank you for them, Father, for each one. And Father, help us be a beacon of light to the community to us. Bless your word. Bless worship, praise, music today, Father, as there be one that has not trusted you to be their Savior yet, Father. Lord, Jesus, save them today. In Jesus' name I pray. Cowboy Church says. Amen. Amen. Cowboy Church says, Yeehaw! <laughs> Yeehaw! 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 How many of you haven't had that second cup of coffee yet? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> doodle orders. Where's our doodle orders? <laughs> oh, we got a birthday. A birthday? <laughs> Who? Well, sing it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Many, many more. Now, do loaders for the... If you're by yourself, that's a good thing. See, the first one up here usually gets a microphone. Well, you'll have to give her yours, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> do Lord, oh, do Lord, do remember me. Oh, do Lord, oh, do Lord, do remember me. Do Lord, oh, do Lord. Do remember me way beyond the Do 
Somebody last week asked me for a one-year Bible. We will continue with the music program after the brief interruption from the pastor that had been getting everything done. <coughs> so who do we trust in? In crickets. <laughs>
hope for my sake Teach me to take One day at a time One day at a time Sweet Jesus That's all I'm asking of you Give me the strength Do every day What I have to do Yesterday's gone Sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. So for my sake, teach me to think on their Do you remember when you walked among men? Well, Jesus, you know, if you're looking below, worse now than then. Pushing and showing, guarding my mind. So for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. Give me the strength to do every day. What I have to do Yesterday's gone Sweet Jesus And tomorrow may never be mine So for my sake Teach me to take One day at a time Yes, so for my sake Teach me to take One day at a time Texas. 
born born this. Every place else it's born. But in Texas it's born. So you gotta get born. Did everybody get born? We got number two on the bucket list done. Number three, encounter God. Are we still being successful? Somewhere, somehow, down in our life, we heard about, learned about, and met up with God, didn't we? Had to face up to God. What, what are we going to do about that? Had to encounter God. Number four on Christian's bucket list is get saved. What's that mean? Well, it means getting born again. And uh, um, Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be born again. And he explained that what's born of the flesh, which we did in this conceived and get born one and two, born in the flesh, but you must be born again of the spirit. When God created man, he gave man a quality called spirit. He gave man an entity within his creation of flesh called spirit, which makes man a trinity created in the image of God, that God is a trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Man is a trinity. It's man in the flesh, in the spirit, and you have a soul. Soul and spirit ain't the same thing. Uh, so, so, so many times in the Bible it gets confused as being the same thing. And uh, it's, uh, it ain't. The soul is the unique ability that God gave man to communicate and have fellowship with God, which is the Spirit. He didn't give that to bumblebees and cactus. He gave it to man. Now, in studying in the Old Testament, I take great heart in knowing that the word referred to as soul, the soul of man in the Old Testament, there's several instances where it talks about using the same Hebrew word referring to the soul of various animals. And I thought, mm, if you got soul, you got eternal life. And so we've got animals that have eternal life. And a lot of us that have had lots of animals all through our lives and everything, we, we take, and we love our pets and our stock and our horses and mules. So I did some studying about that because I've had a lot down through the years. Soul, eternal, it's identity. Your soul, I call it your mew, M-E-W. It's your mind, your emotions, your will. It's that personality that God created just for you. You are unique. God went through a lot of trouble getting all your great-grandparents' DNA lined up so you could be conceived and born. Lots of things happened down through the generations and everything to get you to where you are. And God told Jeremiah, he said, I want you to preach for me. Jeremiah said, well, I can't do that. I'm just a kid. Nobody pay attention to me. And, and uh, who am I? And God said, Jerry? He, he, I, I just can't imagine he called him Jerry because they were familiar with each other. He says, Jerry? He said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Did he know his place? No, it wasn't formed yet. But he knew his soul, his unique identity. Now, why do I think that animals have unique identities? I've probably had a thousand chickens in my life or more. And I never had two that were just alike. Every one of them is different. I probably got a hundred goats right now, and I guarantee you there ain't none one of them alike. They're all different. My mules, my horses, my donkeys, my dogs, my cats, all of them have different, unique personalities. Now, wait a minute. You, you mean you think that there's going to be, your animal's going to be in heaven with you? Well, I think they have the ability to be, but I believe there's one heck of a stable up there somewhere. Because... The armies of the Lord are coming back to this earth on white horses. These are space horses, I guess. One of my friends 
um, back in Illinois. He, he was in racehorses all of his life. And I think for the third year in a row, he won the biggest biggest race at Illinois State Fair with his Bob uh, Jim Bounder's horse. Jim. He, third year in a row, he's won, what's his horse's name, Epidome or something like that. Um, he, he's won, won the biggest race in Illinois three years in a row with that horse, and that horse probably won, made a couple million dollars down through the years. Uh, big seven-year-old gelding, he's a pacer. I don't know Ballinger boys, they always run pacers. Why couldn't he? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I bet Jim probably wishes he was, but I think he's guilty. But uh, in pacers and trotters, they, they don't have to be better. They're better than not stallions. They do better. But the uh, Bible talks about the horses coming back. We'd be mounted on white horses coming from heaven. Well, you can't be riding them back from heaven if they ain't there. They can't be there unless they got a nephish soul. That's the Hebrew word. Just like mine and yours. Nephish. Encounter God, get saved, so that your eternal identity will dwell forever in fellowship with the God of creation. You have to make that decision in your bucket list at number three when you encounter God. Somewhere down the line before your nephew takes off to eternity, you gotta make a decision what you're gonna do with and about God. He ain't gonna go away. He's not gonna change the plan. I tried for years and years to get on his advisory committee to try to straighten him out on some things. He ain't paying no attention. Um, yet, he hears all through the years he's heard my 911 calls and he's heard my Santa Claus calls and thank God eventually he heard my what do you want me to do God calls. You got to encounter God and come to that place. God, what do you want me to do today? Otherwise we treat him like our servant, you know. Oh we're we're glad he's there to take care of us. We're Sometimes we appreciate it that he gives us water to drink and air to breathe and um, food to eat. And, you know, everything we have is dependent upon God's grace, God's mercy, and God's will. Get saved. Number five, learn how to get along with God. In all my years, the best place I have found how to get along with God is in Cowboy Church. I've been in a lot of other churches and I heard a lot of Greek and Hebrew and a lot of theory of theology and talked about a lot of different things about, you know, uh, can, can God create a rock so big that he can't lift it? You know, a lot of intelligent questions like that. Nobody ever told me how to get along with God. Nobody ever told me that I have to accept God as God. As the God of creation, if I want to get along with Him, I have to honor Him. Because it's just by His grace and mercy that I'm allowed to exist. It's by His grace and mercy that I was ever created. No other way. And His book says that He says He knew me before He ever formed me in my mother's womb. So, well, no, that's what He said about Jerry. Yeah, well, Peter said... God's no respecter of persons. So what he did for Jeremiah, he's done for me. And what he did for me, he did for you. And he's doing for you what he's done for me. Learn how to get along with God. Sounds simple, doesn't it? You know, it's religion stuff and everything. Re religion complicates getting along with God. They throw rituals in there and you got to do all of this and you got to have that. And, and you know, um, we... We, we started this cowboy church, we met at Tim Dewey's kitchen table. You know, that's where it started when the kitchen table got too small and moved the patio and the patio got too small. Well, we, we, we got us a barred room from another church. And when we was able to get some dirt to sit on, we come out here and we sat in the dirt, put down some bales of straw and put up a canopy. And we was out here in the dirt, we had a cowboy church. And you all have built a building. 
and had a place and we have dinner on the ground and we have chuck wagon and we have trail rides we have arena and we got goat heads in the arena so help move those panels right after church let me check my notes is that in there number five learn how to get along with god how do you get along with god pray you talk to him pray to talk to god talk to god every day he lets you breathe every day you know i mean um he lets everybody have air breathe god what do you want me to do today god i pray for my friends i pray for my loved ones god i got family that might need to be saved god would you go go save them i can't save them i can just plant the seed but god you got to put it in their heart to be saved and you got to call them to you god you've got to get them saved lord my friends my family people i've worked with you know down through the years you might want us to go sow some seeds Tell them about God. What God's done. God knows them and God's got a plan for the life. He went on and told Jeremiah, he said, I've got a plan for your life and it's a plan for good. I always thought my plan was way better than God's plan. You know? My, my plan was to be a millionaire time I was 35. In, in the, our high school graduation stuff and everything, we used to have a prophecy thing and we'd write down stuff in there. And, and my prophecy was that I'd have a million dollars time I was 35. And I didn't make it. I was 36. So. Yeah. It's close. And you know what? I have lived and seen and had the best of what this world has to offer. I've had the best life. Uh, God's blessed me with good kids. I've got nine good grandkids. Nine, that right? Yeah, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, nine grand, good grandkids, and one great one. <laughs> I've had a, such a blessed life. I, I've been, I've been like a yearling cork, cook, yearling colt that need cut. <laughs> you know, in my life, I just headstrong, and no fence is too high, and. Um, God's just got a way of saying, I got something for you to do, and you settle down, we'll get to it. I knew when I was 16, just as plain as could be, God told me, He says, I want you to preach. <laughs> you got to be kidding. Not me, I was already as drunk and had the fastest car in town. Just almost had the prettiest girl in town by then. I was 17 when that happened. Preach? God, I can't do that. I I'm not worthy. You know, all the excuses come up. God, you know, like the Holy Spirit just quiet. I never heard God through a megaphone. I never got any telegrams or emails or messenger or telegrams or anything like that from God saying, I want you to preach. It was in my heart. It was in my mind. It was on my mind. It was coming up. I tried to hide from it. Then you'd sober up and it'd still be there, you know. I want you to preach. God, I can't do that. There's nobody paying attention to me. It took me a long time to learn that I had nothing to do with it. You know? You know, and sometimes after church service, people say, oh, you, that was a great message you had and everything like that, you know? You don't understand. I don't have anything to do with this. I don't. I don't even know what I'm saying until I go home and listen to it. That's the truth. I go home and listen to it to see if I mess something up real bad and I have to come back and straighten it out. Because when I get up 4.30, 5 o'clock, whatever it is on Sunday morning, I say, God, what are we going to do today? I remember one time I was at a meeting of our local preachers when I was first surrendered and first started pastoring and started first church. The local pastors group wanted me to meet with them. I met with them. We had coffee at the pastime grill true texas and they wanted us to participate with them in a sunrise service right for each community sunrise service you know and they said we well, commit all our churches get together and have community sunrise services yeah i said we, we want you to participate with us we do 
I said, okay, I'll preach. You know, that's just said just like that. And they said, what do you mean you'll preach? And I said, well, I'll, I'll preach. I'll bring the message. He said, well, what, what, what makes you think you should bring the message? I said, I work real hard to teach my people the truth, and I don't want them to listen to any heretics. <laughs> I think that was, last, that was the last time I was at the preacher's meeting. I've never been real ecumenical in that respect. When when I finally said, "Okay, God, I'll preach," I wrote down on on legal pad every denomination, every religion that I knew of, and then I studied what every one of them believed on paper. I wrote down every one of them, and I went down the list. And when I found something in their doctrine or in their religion, re re don't care in their religious rituals or stuff that I believed was unscriptural, I crossed that one off. Because I, I wanted to be representative and work with whatever God wanted me to, but I wanted to, I wanted to be true, I wanted to be faithful to God's Word. I looked at Islam, I studied Islam. Man, that's the devil's bunch of junk. And uh, Hindu and, and uh, all them other things, and every denomination is represented in the United States. This was before the non-denominational denomination became a den denomination. And uh, when I got down comparing every denomination to what the Bible says and holds to the truth of the Bible, the only thing that was left on that list was Southern Baptist, the um, missionary Baptist out of Arkansas and on that list was and, and that was their 1963 articles of belief and faith in our cowboy churches it's built into our paperwork whatever you call it our documents that will affiliate with Southern Baptists as long as they hold to their beliefs of the 1963 articles of faith and doctrine. They vary from that we're done with them. They've been skating awful close to it a few times. I thank God I think there's some strong-willed men that are picking up the slack and maybe straightening it out. But listen, why, why, why do we belong? Why do we associate together with other churches? Well, I did 28 years in mission work around Mexico and supporting other missionaries around the world. And one church can't send a missionary and support them. One of the small churches can't. So Paul gathered up support from all of the churches that he started and everything to support the starting of other churches. That's what association is for. Association has no authority over the church. It's the, the churches have authority over their association for direction and purpose and stuff. And uh, um, if it's from the top down, that's wrong. It's got to be from the bottom up, and it's a hard time keeping that straight. Well, I started preaching, and I started when I was ordained. My Uncle Charlie and Annie Sis, he's deacon 66 years. He brought me this Bible when I was ordained, come down from Illinois. And I wrote in the back of that Bible in 1975, prayed up, fessed up, well fed. I didn't know the first thing. I went to seminary down there three or four times. I went to seminary right down the road, Jacksonville. And it got to where they hated to see me come. I asked questions and, and had a lot of discussions with Dr. Duggar and, and um, stuff that, that he didn't have scriptural explanations for. He just shake his head and said, I don't know why you ask those questions. <laughs> well, I wanted to know. And I had reasons to want to know. I had people asking me questions, and I want to know. I need. I want to answer it with scripture, with scriptural reasons for things. <coughs> God's word. Baptism saves people. Not going through the water doesn't save anybody. Sprinkling them when they're a baby. <laughs> no. Might might rinse off a little cradle cap. Baptism doesn't save anybody. I wish it did. If it did, I'd spend all my time down there along the river with my AK-47 running folks off into the river. 
You know, because I don't want to see anybody go to hell. I've read the book about what hell is. I don't want to see anybody go to hell. It, it just absolutely disturbs me if the devil gets one victory of Adam's seed in hell's destruction. God didn't create man to dwell in hell. He created us to live in paradise with him, in fellowship with him. We choose if we're going to live in fellowship with him. We make that decision. How you do that? By obeying him. By obeying him. Well, I can't obey him. I don't obey him. I don't want to obey him. Well, you don't have to obey him. You believe in him? Yeah, I believe he's there. Do you believe he died for your sins? Sometimes some of us are working on that. Pride gets in the way sometimes. But when it comes right down to it, we say, yeah, I don't measure up to God's, and I don't deserve to be in His presence. I don't qualify. And God says, I've got a plan that makes that possible. And now you hear that plan. That plan is, trust my son Jesus which died to pay the price for your sins. It's like dad picking up the tab on your speeding ticket, right? He pays for your speeding ticket. You pay for your own, you quit speeding or quit getting caught. God the Father says, I paid the price so that we can have fellowship. Just believe it and trust it. Receive it, receive that gift. Say, God, I, I know I don't deserve it, but I want to be saved. I want to have fellowship with you, God. Pray it up. God, what do you want me to do today? Go do it. Whatever it is. Most time I just want you to get up and go feed the horses and get your business done. All right? Maybe muck out the stall. All right? But some days he might have something specific to say. Remember Cousin Ebert? You haven't talked to him for a long time. Why don't you call him up and talk to him? Tell him what God's doing in your life. You say, call Ebert? I never did like that sucker. You know? God says, he's my child. Dead. Okay. Be obedient. Whatever God puts on your heart. How can you tell the difference? If God's trying to to lead you into something or if the devil's just trying to trick you into something. Can you tell the difference in your voice? How? How do you tell the difference? You can't tell the difference what the devil says and what God tells you. The only way you know for sure is if you're prayed up, fessed up, well fed, you're in fellowship with him and what you're hearing is not contrary to God's word. God will never have you do something contrary to his word. I have done some marriage counseling. They usually don't last long. First meeting, this is what God's word says about being married and how to get along and do this and that. Do it. Come back next week and we'll talk about it. Come back next week. Well, did you do what we talked about? Well, no. I said, okay, well, we're done. That's marriage counseling. No. I don't have a large clientele, <laughs> but that's okay too. You know, um, if you if you want to have peace and joy in your life, you better do what God says do. There's a big difference between happiness and joyfulness. Joyfulness is a spiritual thing in your life that you can only get from being. In fellowship with God. Great joy. It's a spiritual thing. A spiritual aspect. Happiness. It comes from that Latin word. Haphazard. Happenstance. Happiness. You know, it's just like throwing the dice and seeing what the flesh comes up with. You know. You want joyfulness. Not happiness. You know, um, a quart of whiskey can make you happy. Until, well, after a while... Then you'd be hugging the porcelain or tequila, as far as that goes, wherever that fits. Number one on the bucket list, get conceived. Well, we've, we've been successful with that. Get born, we've been successful in that. Encounter with God, you're getting it. Get saved, you better have. 
Number five, learn how to get along with God. Prayed up, fessed up, well fed. Read God's Word every day. Read God's Word every day. Six, obey God. And when you mess up and don't obey God, you fess up. God, you're right, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I'm going to be in fellowship. You're right. Number seven on the back bucket list. Having done all, stand. Wait. Watch. Be ready. So today, we'll just talk about... I'm just getting ready to get started with our message here. <laughs> We would just talk a little bit about Genesis 1 through Revelation 22. It won't take long to get through those 66 books. Only about six pages. Psalms 33. Let the godly sing for joy to the Lord. It's fitting for the pure to praise Him. Praise the Lord with melodies on the lyre. Make music for Him on the ten-stringed harp. See, I told, I told Bob and, and Sammy that it takes both of them to make us a ten-stringed harp because we've got four on the bass and six on the guitar. So it takes two of them. You know, anyway. Praise the Lord with melodies. Make music on the ten-stringed harp. Sing a new song of praise. Pray that fast up. Well fed, right, Don? Skillfully on the harp and sing with joy. For the word of the Lord holds true and we can trust everything He does. you believe that? You know, sometimes we don't understand. And sometimes things come into our life that are just so painful we think we can't take another breath. It just seems heavy. It's burdensome. It's just enough. We don't even want to. We just want... You see, the enemy wants to depress you, wants to hold you down, wants to steal your joy when we do things that opens our life up, opens our soul up to incursions of evil spirits, drugs, alcohol, pornography, all these things that are the lust of the flesh, opens the doors for evil influences to come into our life, get us away from fellowship with God and steal our joy. And we think we're, we've traded it for a little bit of happiness. And then monkeypox show up. Psalms 33, 5. He loves whatever is just and good. The unfailing love of the Lord fills the earth. It's available for us, for everybody It's there. The Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created. We're in Genesis 1. <clears throat> he breathed the word and all the stars were born. He just said, there's stars. Can you imagine that? And you know what? They can't even figure out how many there are, even with the best telescopes they got in that. When they think they've seen the end of the universe, they find out that, oh, there's, there's a lot more out there yet. He assigned the sea its boundaries and locked the oceans in vast reservoirs. That boy from Tennessee missed that verse. Remember him? What was his name? Gore? Didn't, didn't he say that most of America could be underwater by... 20, by 2,000, I think he said, or something like that. Send me all your money because the oceans are going to flood the world, is what Al Gore said, wasn't it? Something like that. But he missed this verse because if he knew this verse, he wouldn't have said that. He, that's right. Well, I don't think he ever believed it. He just wants send me your money. You know, he don't care. He assigned the sea its boundaries and he locked the oceans in vast reservoirs. I saw something the other day which goes back to like... Um, 1914, I think it was, they was doing measurements along the coasts, and they ain't changed a bit. Ain't that something? Not where there's hard rock and it don't wash away. Sand changes, the shore, you know, beaches and that come, wash and come and go and stuff like that. But the hard rock stays the same, the water's just as deep as it ever was. And it ain't Where's the water gonna go? Where's it going to go? If that race goes up in the sky, what does it do? It falls on Dolan Springs. <laughs> you know, the Surbat River runs right across the front of my house over there. And we had water in the creek here a couple times this week. Let the whole world fear the Lord. And let everyone stand in awe of Him. 
he just put the stars out there. Just there's the stars. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? What an awesome God. Let the whole world fear the Lord. Let everyone stand in awe of him. For when he spoke, the world began. Genesis 1. It appeared at his command. The Lord frustrates the plans of the nations and thwarts all their schemes. And we're not flooded yet. Seashore still where it's supposed to be. But the Lord's plans stand firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. What joy for the nation whose God is the Lord. Oh, have we ever let that slip as a nation? Good people sit back quiet while the evil kick God out of our public arena, out of schools, while they started legally killing babies, while they started turning our society into Sodom and Gomorrah. Good people knew God's word, have sat back and said, let George do it. Let somebody else do it. You know, uh, I'm going to go ride my jet skis after. Maybe go ride my horse. I'm going to do anything but stand up for what's right. Because i got money in my pocket, got income coming in, got a roof over my head. Let somebody else take care of it. Let somebody else straighten it out. That's where we're at. What joy for the nation whose God is the Lord, whose people He has chosen as His inheritance. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees the whole human race. From His throne He observes all who live on the earth. He made their hearts so He understands everything they do. The best equipped army cannot save a king, nor is great strength enough to save a warrior. Don't count on your war horse to give you victory for all its strength. It cannot save you. But the Lord, see there's one of them big butts. But the Lord watches over those who fear Him. Those who rely on His unfailing love. He rescues them from death and He keeps them alive in times of famine. There's a big flyer plan up in what, Oregon, Portland, somewhere, something like that. Made something like 5% of the flyer for the whole nation, or maybe it's the whole world. Big flyer mill up there, it's burned down. Something is messing with everything that supplies food to us. But he rescues them from death and keeps them alive in times of famine. Might be good to stay in touch. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you alone. Ephesians 6.13 says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all, Stand. When you've done everything you can do, when you've got done giving the last county supervisor an earful, or the school board member, or the the um, um, board of of um, codes, whatever you call them, zoning and planning, when you when you have told them what you think and the way you think things have been done, when you've done all you can do is just stand and tell somebody else what you told them to go tell them so they get an earful. Otherwise, they'll just do whatever they want to do. And if you tell enough of them, tell them to do what's right and do it in the right way, maybe they'll start paying attention. Psalms 27, 14. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Jesus tells us in Luke 12, it says, Fear not, little flock. You know, Jesus talks about the gates. says there's a broad gate. The world's on that track. Gates wide open. Leads to destruction. It says many there be, be on that road. 
He says there's a narrow gate, and straight is the way, and few there be that find it. Fear not, little flock. Little flock. He didn't say, fear not, very big worldwide church. He says, fear not, little flock, for few there be that find it. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Galatians 5.27, 5.25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. How you do that? Be prayed up, fessed up, well fed. That's it. Every day. It's an everyday thing. The only days that you don't need to be prayed up, fessed up, well fed is on those days you don't ever breathe. If you're breathing, do these things. Galatians 5.16 This I say then walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You won't be chasing happiness. You'll be living joyfully. Big difference. Isaiah 1.19 If you be willing and obedient you shall eat of the good of the land. Romans 8.1 There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. John 8.12 says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. You know the best way to learn the truth of God's Word? Have God teach it to you. Don't trust any preachers or in seminaries or Bible courses or anything. And there's probably a lot of good ones out there. But there's nothing better than you and God and, and being prayed up, fessed up, and getting well fed and saying, Okay, God, I just read this. What's this mean? How does this apply to my life? How, how do I use this tool in my life? Further your kingdom so I can have more joy in my life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Good news is, Jesus the Savior. The old jailer thought he was going to die. Thought he was, the government was going to kill him because earthquake shook his jail apart. And that's the way they did it back then. It's his fault. Had the earthquake and jail fell down. Paul and Silas been in that jail all night. They, they was in jail because they'd been preaching revivals around town telling people Jesus saved and of course people didn't want to hear that they wanted just to go get happy and not be joyous and they yelled out at him said, what must I do to be saved and he says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved that's complicated you know who Jesus is you know what the Bible says about him believe it trust him that what he did pays the price for your sins that's how you have fellowship with the Father that's how you receive His joy in your life. Do it every day. It's not just a Sunday morning thing. It's every day. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I shall be saved in thy house, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, and God's raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know what the penalty for sin is? Death and separation from God. You know what's important about this part of verse 10 9 it says God's raised him from the dead? That's victory over the penalty of sin. He did that for you in your place. Thou shalt be saved. You know, we, uh, every day, we're, we're living in a hostile world. We're living in a world that the devil wants to kill you. He would kill you. They're trying to kill everybody, you know. They're trying to kill everybody. They want you to be under control. You remember here a while back up in Canada where the truckers were on strike up there and they're saying, we ain't putting up with this, we ain't, you ain't getting, you ain't doing this to us anymore. And, and Justine Trudeau said, watch this. And they shut off their credit cards from the bank. Did you hear that? The government said, you guys don't get any money anymore. You can't use your bank accounts. You know what? How am I going to go to 7-Eleven and get a hot dog and a coat? Oh, well, you can't. They don't take cash anymore. you got to have a card up there or whatever, you know. And, and we control the cards. That's what they want to do right here. They want to do that to you. They want to have absolute control over you. 
so that they can make you believe that rainbow flags are pretty and killing babies is great and cannibalism is a popular thing to come. You been hearing that? My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, we've got an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Advocate. That's a lawyer. A representative. And he is the propitiation, the covering, the payment, the one that makes our salvation possible. The justification, penalty, payment for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus died for every seed of Adam. Every seed of Adam Jesus died for and paid for their sins. My sins, your sins, paid for them. What you got to do is take the receipt, the pardon. God, I receive that. I want to have fellowship with God. God says, believe in what my son did and trust him. I do. And he puts his spirit in you. He puts his DNA in you that gives you eternal life in his presence. Not the bad zip code, the good zip code for eternity. And eternity is a really long time. Dear me, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for the blessings this day. I thank you for each one that's here, Father. God, put it in our hearts to have a desire to want to walk with you every day, Father. Lord, give us a hunger and a thirst for your word. Give us a desire to seek your truth, Father. Give us a desire to serve you, Father. Help us to see that very soon things coming to a head. Time for choices will be gone. God, put it in our hearts to be obedient today. Put it on our hearts to talk to our friends, to our families, fathers, and to the stranger that Jesus saves. Father, forgive us, guide us, direct us, heal us, Father, ask in Jesus' name. Church says, Amen. Cowboy Church says, Amen. And, and Gordon Bob, Joe Bob, says Come back now, you're here. Uh, able body to the arena. Don't move those panels.